In this module, I want to do an example of a uh, particle in free fall. And I'm going to keep the example very simple because what I really want to highlight is choosing coordinate system and also when you have to use logic to find answers to problems and not just the math. The real simple example I want to look at is I'm going to drop a ball from a height and I H and I want to know how fast it is going when it hits the ground. Okay, and so uh, let me get a picture. Our first step is to visualize. I have some ball. I'm going to drop it. It's going to hit the ground. It starts at some height H above the ground. And so that's our visualize. And so I think I know the physics that applies to this problem. I'm going to look at the constant uh, acceleration expressions. In particular, I can clearly identify two points in time that are going that are of significance. I have sort of my initial uh, time when the ball is initially released and the final time when it hits the ground. And what I want to know is how fast it's going when it hits the ground. Okay, so as part of the now brainstorming part of, of solving the problem, I want to get down uh, sort of what I know and what I don't know. Uh, initial time. So this is the time when it's released. I get to choose what my initial time is. I'm going to choose it to be zero. The final time when it hits the ground. You know, we, we solved for this last time for an expression, um, but at the moment I'll say I, I, uh, I don't know what it is. I could resolve it, but, but it's not given in the, uh, in the initial conditions of the problem, so I'll leave it blank for now. And, um, and so now I need to know the uh, initial position. So to do that, I need a coordinate system. I need a schematic. So let's go back to my picture. I need a zero for my coordinate system and a positive axis that's labeled something. I'm going to go positive x up. Okay. So if I'm looking at my initial position, that's right here. And it's at, given this coordinate system, as a, at a value of positive h. And then my final position, it, when it hits the ground, and given this coordinate system, that position is at x is equal to 0. So the initial velocity is when it's initially released in the x, that's 0, and the final velocity when it hits the ground, uh, that's what I'm trying to find. What do I also know? I know that the acceleration in the x-axis is uh, has a magnitude of g, and it's pointed, it's a vector, it's pointing toward the direction of the earth, and in this particular case, the, the center, the direction toward the center of the earth is down, which is along the negative x-axis. So the acceleration is a negative g. Okay, and so let's go. Let's see where we can uh, uh, how to solve this. And we have these sort of handy equations that we know apply in this specific condition. And so that's why I usually go to these instead of say back to my fundamental definitions where I have to rederive all these expressions. Since I've derived these once, I can I can use them once I've established in my problem the context that those equations apply, which I have my two specific points in time, my conditions for constant acceleration, and one-dimensional motion. Okay, so I in fact solved for time before, and so I can do that, ag I can do that again. That's using uh, this expression here, where I had the final position which is 0 is equal to the initial position h plus the initial velocity which is 0 uh, plus 1 half the acceleration which is neg negative g times the time squared final time and I solved this before and I found the final time is equal to the square root of 2 h over g okay well now since I have that, let's look where I could use that. I, what I want is the final velocity, and that's that's right here. And to do that, I needed the time. And so the time now I can I can use in this expression. Now that I have the time, I know the acceleration, I know the initial velocity. I can find the final velocity. 
So by doing that, I have my final velocity is equal to my initial velocity, which is zero, plus the acceleration, which is negative g, times the time, which is the square root of 2h over g. And so I now have for my final velocity is equal to, well, g over the square root of g is equal to the square root of g, so negative square root of, I'll write it, 2gh. And so I ask myself, does that, does that make sense? Uh, it's negative, and so when it hits the ground, it's going to be moving down, which is the negative x direction. So the negative makes sense. Uh, stronger the acceleration, faster it goes. The drop it from a higher height, the faster it'll be when it hits the ground. So these all things these make sense, and uh, and the negative sign is the right is the right direction. So I want to pay attention to a, a couple things. Um, one of which is this is the final step in solving any problem, which is checking to make sure that it makes sense. The other thing to um, to point out is what it means by what we know and what we don't know. I stated in the problem that we know the height h and the acceleration g, but I never in fact gave absolute numbers for, for those expressions. I never gave a number for h and a number for g, and so many students get confused at that point. Well, then they don't know what h is or g because there hasn't wasn't a number associated with it. However, in physics, that is how we often solve problems. We say, okay, assume we know what h is, but we're going to solve it for an arbitrary known value of h, and an arbitrary known value of the acceleration g. And then we end up with an expression in terms of those values, g and h, without plugging in absolute numbers. And also, even if we were to have numbers, it's always a good idea to derive the expression in terms of the it, the the generic uh, letters G and H and then plug the numbers in at the end. But I wanted to draw that distinction. Sometimes we'll say we know something without giving an exact value for it. And when we're say, what we're saying is we're sol solving for an arbitrary value of that expression. Okay, you know, we didn't have to solve it this way. If we go back and look at these expressions up here, if we look at this third one, you know, we didn't know the time. We didn't have to solve it. We know we knew the initial velocity, the acceleration, and we knew the uh, the displacement, which was h. We could have used this equation directly. So let's do that, and and see where that leads us. We can and we can check our original work. So if we do that, we have that the final velocity. I, I'm sometimes leaving off my my x subscript. Uh, here, so I didn't put my x here. Um, you know, as long as we're in one dimension and you know that it's the x, it's a kind of a redundant subscript. But I like to try to keep it there to remember that these are vectors, and in one dimension we're just working with the components of those vectors. Okay, so the final velocity squared is equal to the uh, initial velocity squared plus 2a uh, delta x which in this case is equal to 0 plus 2 negative g and delta x is x final which is 0 minus x initial which is positive h so 2 negative g times negative h and this gives us that the final velocity squared is equal to 2 g h now we, we have to be a little careful if I'm going to solve for the final velocity, I have to take the square root. Well, there are two possible solutions to this equation. The final velocity is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2gh. So if I had solved the problem this way, I would have gotten to this point, and now I'd have to make a choice. Is this positive or negative? And to do that, the math doesn't tell me. That for the math, either one of these is correct. I have to go back to my picture and think logically about the problem. So the particle was dropped, 
it's falling and when it hits the ground it's going to have a velocity right immediately before it hits the ground it's going to have a velocity that's down that's in the negative x direction given this coordinate system and so that is a negative negative. and so the final answer then is negative the square root of 2 g h so in this case it was necessary to come up with the right answer to logically extract information from the context of the problem. There's no equation for that. You had to deduce it from the information given. And that's a common occurrence in these types of physics problems. I want to solve this one again. Only this time I want to do a completely different coordinate system just to show you that the, that can be done. Let's go back. I'm going to drop the ball from a height, h. Only this time, I'm going to have my zero of my coordinate system at the point where I drop the ball. I'm going to have my positive axis, axis down, and I'm going to call it the y-axis. But I still have two points in time. My initial and my final is when the ball is released and when the ball hits the ground. And so what do I know? My time initial is equal to zero. My time final is equal to something. In this case, I'm, in the, I'm on the y-axis, not the x. So my initial y position is, in this case, zero. My final y position is when it hits the ground. And this is in the positive y direction. So it's a positive value of h. My initial velocity when the, in the y direction is 0. And my final velocity in the y is my unknown. That's what I'm looking for. My acceleration has a magnitude g. The direction is given by the coordinate system. The acceleration due to gravity always points towards the center of the Earth, which for this system is in the positive y direction. So the acceleration for this is a positive g. Delta t is still equal to t final. And delta y, which is y final minus y initial, is equal to uh, h, positive h, final minus the initial. All right. And so now, let's go ahead and uh, solve this problem. I can solve everything. If I look at the... Uh, if I look at this equation, use this one first, like we did last time, and solve for the time. I have my final position, which is h, is equal to my initial position, 0, plus my initial velocity times time, 0, plus 1 half my acceleration, which is positive g t squared. And if I solve for time, my final time is equal to the square root of 2h over g, exactly what I had before. If I want to find my final y, my velocity, final velocity, I'm going to use the, the time that I just solved for to put into that expression. That's equal to my initial velocity, which is 0, plus the acceleration, which is positive g, which is times time, which is 2h over g. So my final velocity is equal to a positive square root of 2gh, which is right. In this, with this coordinate system, positive is down right before it hits the ground. It's going to be going down, so its final velocity will be positive. And so then finally, if I, if I use, if, if like before, I just use this, uh, this last expression, I have that final velocity y squared is equal to 0 plus 2 times the acceleration, which is g, times delta x, which is a positive h. And again, I get vf y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2gh, which means I have to go back to my picture and schematic and coordinate system to extract, okay, what will the final velocity be, positive or negative? Well, right immediately before it hits the ground, its velocity is going to be down, which 
for this coordinate system is along the positive y-axis. So my final uh, velocity is positive square root 2gh. And so here's the results are exactly the same. They're independent of the coordinate system. However, how you go through and how you use the logic then can change about what's positive or negative depending on the coordinate system itself. And also, this explains why it's so important to have a clear picture, clear schematic, and a good visualization step of the problem you're working on.